Hello, hello, I am Rangru. And I'm Graham. And we're here today with another 1v1 from the World Game Bootcamp Discord Elite Tournament. We are on the Paddy Field, and who do we have playing today? So on the left-hand side here, in the blue, we have Greyhound playing Norad. And then on the right, we have General Bullinger returning to our cast ring with Baltic Front General. Yeah, so we have a revenge matchup. I'm sure you guys guy who play... A few weeks or a month ago now of General Revenge not taking the victory. So we'll see if General hmm. Revenge can get the revenge. Yeah, we'll have to watch out and see here. We do see him open up with a Sokol and then uh, Greyhound with a Dap as well. Both of them kind of screening their initial infantry movements. Ooh, Sokol actually in the first shot there with its Igla. And it should get the kill here. Oh, oh. they should trade. <laughs> An even trade, yeah, for sure. Uh, we're seeing Bulinger not go too heavy down south, but... I see got a pretty big commitment up north. Both Emron Rilks, free ROM. Why do you open up for free ROM? It's the he has the forty-five point ROM. So uh, oh, okay, yeah. So I guess it's just to ensure that whatever flies over, he's at least getting a hit out of something. Is <laughs> the general assumption I would make there, as we see his infantry um, going really hot there. Jakari ninety getting into the town there in Alpha, and then deploying into Bravo as well. So he's definitely making a strong push up north. Whereas down south we see uh, Greyhound going in hot. Yeah, both sides playing heavy on the opposite flanks, of course. I mean, it can pay off really well for both sides, especially down south. We've seen a few times, if you manage to push into Foxtrot, you don't have to fill the yeah. cap trait. You just hold that one sliver, and that's a very important point to hold. Because this is paddy field. There's not a whole lot of points to hold to begin with. Yeah, it can be really difficult. Like, once a, someone from the blue side's entrenched there in that little, like, area of Foxtrot... It can be really hard for Red to evict them from that position. It's just a natural position, uh, defensible terrain. So, and we see that Joe Bullinger is probably going to lose this here. Highlander, Rifleman moving up. Either Greyhound even has an M1A2 in the back line there to support that push. Oh, a lot of very good firepower. So I think it's just going to be a race of who can capture what sides the fastest. Of course, you know... Greyhound can only capture so much from Foxtrot, but Alpha is a little bit more nicer for Bullinger geographically, as it is possible Ooh. to fully capture Alpha. It's also possible to get Nighthawked in Alpha as well. Yeah, the Nighthawk comes in right there. The ROMs are too far back, so they're not actually able to do anything there. Yeah, and that infantry just went bye-bye right there. Got blapped. And we see as the uh, Rifleman also down south in Foxtrot, Greyhound is going to take that position there, evicting the Yakari 90 the uh, XAKT is actually using up all the ammo on their Bushmasters. It's pretty funny. You don't see that every day. Yeah, and they survived to tell the tale. We're seeing more KTs make a rain to hotel. We're seeing the Humvee CV actually back off. A10 coming in hot, like a match of War Thunder, and does get the kill. Yeah, A10's a nasty uh, piece of equipment right there, especially when the, there's nothing in the sky right now to really threaten it. There are the three ROMs that Boulanger has, but they're a little far back, and they are in the middle of the forest line. So we did bring an MIA um, T right there to go ahead and put some fire into those Canadian Airborne as he tries to push up his infantry further into Alpha. Yeah, Bullinger is really making a very aggressive play up north, really to the detriment of Foxtrot. Oh, you can afford to do that, because very unlikely anything further is going to happen in Foxtrot. So you might as well try to go all in, send it in Alpha, and just try to lock that bad boy down. Yeah, I mean... It it's all going to depend at the end of the day who actually succeeds in their push like you talked about earlier here. And we do see that Bullinger is making good progress there. The A2's actually been brought up by Greyhound because he does view this as a pretty significant threat. And it doesn't look like... Yeah, with the A2 up there, I don't think there's going to be much more pushing left in Foxtrot anyways for Greyhound. Yeah, he can probably move through in the forest if he keeps his infantry in there, but A2 is a massive piece of kit and that's a crazy redeployment going all the way from foxtrot up north and alpha really speaks volumes as how much of a threat this is to greyhound's lines yeah i also think it shows you the like the skills a small little thing but tips you the skill of the players is that a lot of players whether it's red dragon steel division they seem to forget that their vehicles can move to other sectors of the map <laughs> besides the one front that they're at and so redeploying like a high value unit to where it's most needed just shows you that we're watching two like top level players compete in this game right now. Yeah, yeah, that's something you see very, very often. So it's nice to see stuff actually maneuver about. But Bullinger is definitely getting a very nice sort of foothold into Alpha. He's got a lot of infantry. It's going to be hard for Greyhound to push him out. He's getting free recon Sheridans and 
Not a whole lot of info. That's a, that's a really interesting call again for your recon Sheridans. Yeah, I'm not sure what the uh, necessarily the purpose of it is. You know, I'm not those are the best red game uh, red dragon player. Excuse me. And so my viewpoints always with the Sheridans kind of trash. But maybe this one has more fun, um, viability in the um, maybe in like close quarter engagements and stuff like that. Yeah, it's just is a it... cheap thirty point five yeah. vehicle of recon. I mean, it will die if you look at it not like. Oh, wrong. it's the five HE. That's why. Yeah. 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 I've answered my own question. <laughs> there we go. Mystery solved, gang. Another yeah, Nighthawk strike down south. Yeah, at the same time that the Nighthawk's going and dropping some more um, some more bombs. I'm actually, where do you hit? Where do you hit at? I think he tried to hit the the Eric guys that finished Terminators down. Oh yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. And they're down to one HP there. Because at the same time, there is some more finished Terminators pushing into golf along some of your Car 90 and some KTs as well. Trying to create some more pressure. I like that move from there from Bullinger, trying to apply pressure in other sectors of the map at the same time that he's making his main push here in Alpha. Yeah, pushing from Foxtrot into the other side of Foxtrot is not a smart move. It's all that open ground. Really, right. your best bet into re-securing Foxtrot from Bullinger's side is to play heavy and go to knock out supply lines. Machine Rocket Artillery, is he trying to go for...? I think he's trying to counter-battery the mortar. Yeah. Yeah, and he does, uh, he misses, he shakes it up a little bit, but no actual damage there. And the Urigan is now on the field right there. More ammo being, uh, rocket strikes coming from it there. I'm not sure what he was hitting quite right there. Oh, maybe the Abrams was there previously. Yeah. Actually, Abrams is almost out of gas. <laughs> He's been moving about too much. Yeah, that's real life right there. <laughs> I think needs a big time resupply. Yeah, one last rocket there coming out from the Urigan. And looks like Bullinger's just going to try ahead and I think maybe he's kind of just taking a content with what he's taken there, Rang. And looks like he's kind of digging into a more defensive um, position here. And honestly, it's very strong there. That's going to take a lot of firepower from Greyhound to break that spot. Yeah, both sides are in a pretty fair position right now. We're seeing both extreme flanks are being reinforced quite a bit. And actually, Bullinger is pushing into Foxtrot. And with yeah, all his KTs... That's... Yeah, the KTs just shredding an infantry, a squad of infantry there. Those Highlander 90s, they do have an Eryx, but they need to be careful. That's four KTs right there just dishing out the uh, 30 mil pain. Yeah, and that's really the problem of relocating that E2 Abrams. If that E2 Abrams yeah. was there, this push would not happen. But uh, yeah, and, all the KTs, man. And actually the Thunderbolt and the Nighthawk have both been called out here by Greyhound. This is really, he senses the threat here. We see that, yeah, Thunderbolt going to get one KT, yeah, two KTs down there. And some people might say that's a little expensive, but he really needed to stop that from getting too much further or it could have wiped out all the infantry or close to it in that area until they ran out of ammo. Yeah, very good use of the port coming in clutch. And yeah, the Highlanders should be able to finish up the job if they can oh. hit their bloody Eryxes. Yeah, they are panicked a little bit from something else earlier. Oh, and the KT right there getting some shots in, but he's almost out of ammo. Oh, but the Yakar 90 up there too. So he actually might even kill the Highlanders. A very, very good push here from Bullinger, but they have power coming in clutch. We've seen some reinforcements and M1, yeah, just a basic M1 Abrams. And also the Recon Sheridan to spice things up. Yeah, he's pushing that over there. Oh, I thought he was going to keep going further into Golf there. We actually see the Spike Missile Team from Bullinger push up now, because I do think he spotted the armor that's been brought up here, so he wants to get those, um, those ATGMs in position to deal with that Abrams. And he's got some flamers coming in as well to try and hold that forest line. Do I think Bullinger's going to get back in there, Ring? Yeah, he's You're pretty close. He's in a very good position right now, just with that open field. Of course, his main problem is ammunition. Yeah, yeah, they do burn through. With 180, those KTs do burn through ammo pretty fast. I mean, a lot of times IFVs die quickly in the game, anyways. So being able to get a lot of utility out of them, that's something you don't see necessarily that often. Um, with a, with a specific I, IFE like that. Yeah, and Greyhound's even relocating the Nighthawk, I think, just to shoot down the KT. Oh, yeah, I think you're right, too. He's bringing a Hawk over there as well. And we're at the same time, he is pushing up um, into Alpha here, but it's really slow, and I'm not sure how successful it will be. I love to come down to this engagement. So the Voodoo's out here. It's searching for some radars. And the ROM's opening up along with the Finnish Terminators right there. And there goes the Voodoo. That's what I was saying. You get three of them together, they can get a. They might be able to get a kill. <laughs> yeah, the, the Voodoo's by themselves, not exactly very scary. It was very interesting of his thing, because he has the Voodoo's and the Raven, both in the air power. So he's invested quite a lot in seed operations. 
No, yeah, it's a, he's definitely put in his deck that he's going to try and target enemy radars for sure. We see that the Thunderbolt is still operating. Um, at the same time, both players have called out CVs. Uh, Greyhound calling out a command, aim one Abrams for Alpha, and Bullets are going ahead and put an APC into Fox Trout, along with a recon T-55 too. I think both sides now kind of feel content in this certain area as they continue to gear up um, for this you know, clash in Alpha here. Yeah, I think it's really where things aren't going to boil down. I mean, those two M1 Rilks have really not done much this match, but now they are starting to come into play, as he's in a pretty good position currently to deal with any fraction alpha. As A2 the, uh, is out of gas. <laughs> yeah, he's completely out of gas. He's get smoked up. And while that was happening, the Jurgens actually dropped on top of the Chieftain Marksman, and the Spike Missile Team from Bullinger was able to spot it and get the kill on the Chieftain. That's a nice piece of AA that's down right there. And a little pickup for Bullinger. Yeah, not a bad trade at all. Oh, Nighthawk behind enemy lines. He's going for the... <laughs> oh, he's going for the Yurg, and he didn't move it at all. Wow, what that's... a snipe right there. Oh, that's some, like, 4v4 shit right yeah, man. Like, going into yeah, the that... enemy base to just, like, snipe stuff. Oh, I love that it. That is absolute insanity right there. <laughs> I didn't even notice that I was so zoomed in on Alpha until you, like, the Nighthawk's in the back line. Yeah. That's Bro, it's crazy. a stealth plane, man. Right, right. It was really stealth right there. <laughs> That's a good snipe, yo, because Aragon has been causing quite a lot of havoc. I'm going to talk about when we got into more of a pause that this is the first time in a while I've seen the Jurgen really get some value. Um, and that just shows you, even if there's not artillery counterbattering, you move your units. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. I almost feel like the game should be over after that. Like that's, <laughs> that's it. I, I would have GG. It would have been done. <laughs> Broken my morale. Yep. What well, well, a... Eight <laughs> 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 no, we see that the conflict is still actually kind of stagnating a little bit, Rang, in Alpha here. The Wilkes have been repaired, but um, <clears throat> Greyhound has pushed up a little bit, got back into one of the towns there. And he does seem like Bullinger is kind of reassessing what he wants to do offensively. Yeah, he's definitely stored quite a bit. I really do love just the constant use of Ye 10s. It's just a cool plane, of course, but it's been working out very effectively for him. He hasn't been picking up anything big individually, but it's right. been constant pressure and sniping those KTs over and over and over again. And General Bullinger has not been able to set up an effective air net to deal with him. He only has like one half like platoon of roms yeah roms which they are they're not necessarily the greatest piece of a out there right he does have three of them but they're all concentrated into one singular area and with a short range i'm pretty sure it's only like yeah so it's only 3150 on the planes it's really not that great of a long range AA piece so that he has to get in close and it's just uh he's not really able to dissuade the a10 from kind of at least just hanging out and providing fire support wherever he needs it yeah, because he's just using the A-10 as a Maverick platform rather than doing the ballsy maneuver of doing gun runs. But Bullinger's right, right. actually got golf. Like, it's not a stronghold, but he's getting into golf right now. And Greyhound's realizing this and having to relocate his one Abrams. Yeah, we actually see the Abrams now pushing up here to try and intercept these BTR 50s. Yeah, he gets them on the road, one shot out. I don't think Bullinger's react, um, realized it yet. He's going to lose infantry in the transport. Yep, there goes one. Yeah, he definitely has it in the TH-495 um, Season 2. He's going to lose both squads. Yeah. Good yeah, little pick off. Yeah, a little sloppy there from Bullinger because at the same time, he was microing up north. He's committing to a full frontal assault here, I think. Yakari 90 dropping out, smoke being deployed. Three Wilkes up here. Panzar Yakari moving as well. Yeah, it's getting real uh, hectic up there in Alpha. Yeah, and really, you've seen the one problem here. Is our Greyhound really only has that one piece of heavy A2 Abrams action, and he's having to keep relocated to deal with these choke points. Oh, I guess the A10's trying to come in, but does not manage to pick up a Rilk. Because right now, he's Rilk to the kingpin of Alpha. They can just decimate anything. Yeah, and the Igla actually warding off the uh, A10 there, getting a hit in it, and Greyhound um, evacuing it. We see this Yakari 90 gets stuck in the open here. There's no smoke to cover him. He's Canadian Airborne along with their IFVs just shredding them to pieces right there in the open. Yeah, and the, and the Wilkes aren't up there to support it. Yeah, a little bit of smoke in front of the town is really allowing those TH-495s to just do absolute carnage. Yeah, he kind of created like his own ki like a, a killing zone there on accident. Yeah. 
<clears throat> worked out really well. Yeah, and I feel like um, here Bullinger's kind of been a little conservative with his Wilkes. Uh, by leaving them that far in the back, now he's finally brought them up. But they should have been up there a couple of seconds ago to deal with those THs. It's still actually only killing one and then re-smoking it. As he's just super scared of that A-10, I think, right now, Rang. And it's preventing him from using his armor a little more effectively. Yeah. Because if he moves up too much, he's going to be out of AA range. And A-10 with Maverick Missile makes T-72 go bye-bye. Well, Nighthawk actually went back in the back line there again, um, almost killing the CV. For Bullinger and Foxtrot. I'm not sure if he knew it was there or just took a guess at a different position, but he got really close to killing it. Oh, yeah. Only one, H one HP. I'd have to point to the Nighthawk <clears throat> is to get CV snipes. That was his intention in real life, you know? They're going to yes. CV snipe the Yugoslavians and win the war in like five minutes. They were very effective at that. Yes. We actually see <laughs> we actually see the Jakari 90 do get into the town there in Alpha, and they're duking it out there with the Canadian Airborne, the Pioneers. And once again, I just feel like the, the attack isn't quite executed as well because he's so scared of that A-10 right there. Um, the Wilkes will get pulled back again, and the ROMs just really aren't doing any um, – not really having an effect and just waiting to air power and ground. Yeah, he really needs to try and move him up a bit closer. Of course it's dangerous, but – it's kind of stopping him from being able to make any serious plays into Alpha. We've seen Greyhound relocate his A2 Abrams as well as buying another M1 Abrams over into the Alpha sector. And if he was to get him into position, it was M1 Rilk, so going to have a nasty time. Yeah, he actually groups him up right there, so you have him all, <clears throat> you have him all in a uh, group of three right there. He's been moving around a lot, and it looks like he's going to try and intercept this infantry that Greyhound has coming forward. Yeah, he's smoking the back up. Oh, there's an F-18C up. That's an expensive buy there from Bullinger. Yeah, and it's um, he brought it with extra veteran C2, so he's only got one of them. So it is elite, and he's hunting for that A-10. I don't think he's quite ready to commit to it. It's quite Trying funny an F-18 is going to shoot down on A-10. Oh, and there it goes. So, yeah, he's committing to it now, and one Amram goes out, gets oh. the hit. Oh, he flies right over the Chieftain Marksman, gets oh. stunned, but he gets the A-10. And will he be able to evac out safely? And he will. Wow, really good pickup there from Bullinger. Yeah, I think, yeah, just being able to survive that Centurion Marksman, that was very dangerous. But I think the veteran sheet does help you a little bit. It helps you in stunning, so it does in help stun, right, in some right. yeah. But, uh, yeah, that was very risky, but it paid off really well. Yeah, and actually now Bullinger can go ahead and be a little more aggressive, I think, that A-10's out of the picture here. The Nighthawk is still up. Oh, and the MiG 29's up as well. The Nighthawk might get spotted. Oh, no, the MiG 29 turn is actually in a wrong, uh, wrong pattern of its turn. Oh, Nighthawk oh, goes no. down. It doesn't matter. I think the, the Finnish Terminator got the kill. Maybe. With the 1 HP, I, I believe I saw him as Veteran C go up. Yeah, his Veteran C did go up for sure. It was Finnish Terminators, man. I swear to God. Wow, what a monster kill there. Though he did get the bombs off there on the Wilk. So the A2 and the M1 Abrams plus the Riflemen are pushing forward here pretty aggressively. And Bullinger trying to drop smoke to get his Wilks out of there. Yeah, it's a very roll time push there <laughs> from Greyhound. Knowing that he hit those Wilks dead on. And then he's just going to full send into the forest. That is a risky maneuver of the Abrams, of course. He does have some APCs doing a little bit of screening action for him. But this initiative is really going to pay off because he's almost got Bullinger out of Alpha. Yeah, this is, um, if he could kill all the Wilks, it might end up being worth the trade at the end of the day. But the Wilks are going to get away free here. The Panzer Jakari opening with the Apelas right there. Such a deadly um, CQC, you know, anti-tank weapon right there. And they're going into the forest line. They're going to run right into this M1 Abrams. Yeah. He's going to pick up something at Oh, yeah. Least. Greyhound's oh. like, no. Oh. Get me out of there. And let the yeah. rifleman lead the charge. Yeah, and then we see Jakari 90 coming up. More infantry being called out here by um, General Bullinger. Both players is kind of doubling down right now on this death brawl in Alpha that's now kind of starting to get ready to spill over into Bravo. Yep. Yep. And then, yeah, Foxtrot is still... 50-50 split, and Bullinger has lost a little bit of momentum in Gove. So this is actually looking very good for Greyhound in terms of map control. Yeah, curious to see like, how, um, how the offensive goes here. Does he break Bullinger and then and win himself the game? Or is Bullinger able to like stall out this push and then hold on to uh, maybe some of his gains and shift to a different area? 
We see the F-18 and the MiG-29 are back up. Um, but that F-16, I think, is going to get away there. Oh, he gets hit there. Oh, no, he gets away. Yeah, I got lucky. Yeah. One HP there, I think. Two HP. Yeah, Alpha is going to fall here for uh, two Greyhound. So Boulanger is going to be in a bit of a nasty spot because Bravo is one of those sectors where it is pretty easy to 50-50 control. You don't even have to go down the hill from Greyhound's perspective. So Boulanger, he probably needs to try and make a good play into Gulf and Foxtrot and clear that up. Yeah, I just think he might be a little worried right now that if he doesn't um, commit, commit to the defense of Bravo, his front is basically going to collapse here. And we just see it's a bunch of infantry being dumped in. He's also buying more supply vehicles, a force stack there, to try and get these M1 Wilkes up back to health. And I do like the M1 Wilkes and CQC there in the force line supporting the infantry, but they've been ditched. You see the Jakari 90 there kind of get steamrolled. Yeah. I'm just see Greyhounds. It's a very nice little death blob of infantry and armored vehicles in that forest and right now Boulanger is just throwing in things one by one to try and hold Ooh, this them Mexus is pushing up and it's going to ride oh. into it oh and it gets killed by the KT actually wow. yeah this Finnish special forces pulling up here along with more um, KT's some C yeah the CC's in the back line it's yeah uh, this forest bike thing get real nasty here ring yeah it's a real time counter attack but with the Abrams coming in I don't think Boulanger is going to be able to have the firepower to contend with that oh yeah, this bike the spike's oh, the spike. right there. Oh, yeah, the spike is right there, and it does get a... Sh what did it shoot? Abrams, A2. Yeah, yeah A2. Yeah, it did one HP. Yeah, we got the front there, yeah. I looked away for a second, because um, I was going to say, I think at this point, you can really tell that um, Bullinger is missing the Urigan. It In this situation, it's perfect for stunning that infantry, and he could have counterattacked or delayed the infantry push. And he actually, as I say that, he's called out his other Urigan, because this is really the situations, I think, where that... Uh, piece of artillery is valuable. Yep, it's in such a sheet, like, dense location, just yeah. some good stunning, and then doing a good counter-attack with his finished infantry would help out, but right now he is having to pull back from his Canadian airborne and rifleman. So, really yeah, can, good uh, push from Greyhound. Yeah, really good push for Greyhound, though I do think the counter-attack potential is really high here for Bullinger if the timing's right. So we see the Jurgen right now is about to open up. Let's see if he dumps all 16, splits it in half. But he's going to try and suppress all his infantry in here. His Wilkes are actually fully repaired. So I really think he needs to bring them up and then follow right in behind with his infantry. And he can hit a really good timing. Especially because the spikes are still alive in the town in Alpha. Yeah. yeah for how oh, long yeah. we all seen Rifleman push oh, on Oh, really good hits. Canadian Air Airborne down to 4 HP. Rifleman taking HP. Yeah, more of a taking. Yeah, but there goes the infantry full in. Yeah, the Wilkes going in as well. So we see a full combined arms approach here. KT um, flying above as well with the MI-8. Oh, and they're going to clean up this Canadian Airborne here. This is going to be very decisive here for Boulanger <laughs> if he can pull this off. Just being able to clear out that forest and get his Finnish troops back in there. Or allow him to get a foothold back to Alpha. It just all kind of comes down to Aether Abrams. And if she's losing that eight turn in F-17, he's definitely hurting Greyhound quite a bit. Because Boulanger can actually commit to these more offensive operations with his ground vehicles. Yeah, and we see the infantry right there just get decimated. Um, the American and Canadian infantry just get decimated right there. And now this Finnish infantry is going to keep pushing up uncontested. Oh, spike out. Oh, but it barely misses that M1 Abrams right there. The M1 got lucky. And actually, Command Abrams has been called out here by Greyhound. So this is important, um, I think, for you know viewers, especially if they're, you're newer to the game, that M1 Abrams has been called out. That's an expensive unit now called out in the middle of really high-intensity combat. So there's actually a little timing here Bullinger can hit where he does have um, more firepower on the field. Yeah, because that was area. originally designed to be brought in Bravo, but, right. well, it's a bit dangerous now, so he's just kind of hanging about in the hotel, probably got himself a room reserved and all of that, or I hope mm. he had anyway, because, yeah, this, is, this could really go well here for Bullinger. He's making very good offensive operations. Greyhound hasn't been able to get his Abrams online just because of the CQC density of that forest right. fight. So he's having to pull back. He's pulling back quite a bit. Yeah, he's actually completely ditching that area. So the Pioneers have pushed up here. They are going to engage the Finnish um, Special Forces and get wisely backing them up. You don't want to trade out your elite infantry against some, like, you know, some 15-point flamethrower troops. But the Wilkes are actually moving up here too. Smoke being deployed from Greyhound as he pushes his M1A2 up as well. Let's see if the M1 is actually the 
Gamon Wilkier can get a decisive engagement on this armor. Mm -hmm. No, I think he's going to back up Greyhound, deciding discretion is the better part of Valor. That's going to be a very good location for those rogues to be in, because that can screen any major reinforcements into Alpha. Oh, he just... And as oh. he's talking about right there, those pioneers just getting their transports, getting obliterated right there as they try to push into Golf there. Oh, and was it the command Abrams that just got destroyed by the Wilk? Oh, it's a chief. Oh, chief marksman. Excuse me. No, you're right. The commander yeah. was with the golf. Excuse me. Yeah. I've seen both. Nice pickup, though. Yeah, it's a very good pickup. And you're seeing the A2 Abrams and the Rogues are going to back it off. One of the Rogues down to a single point of hit po <clears throat> HP, but neither yeah. side wants to commit to the armor battle because it's costly. Yeah, they're both like flirting with each other. Mm -hmm. like, they keep one. <laughs> like, they keep like kind of dancing <laughs> around. Like, who's going to commit to it first here? And we saw a little bit of it right there, and the A2 slapped that one, Wilk, but it's still alive, and their supply trucks are actually in, in the area. You can get brought up and get it back up to full health. And actually, the M1 Wilk getting some damage in on those pioneers as they try to move forward. Yep. And we're seeing a push into Gulf here from Bullinger, moving up a KT and a Super Puma, just flying right over. There's nothing to stop him because there's no AA in sight. There's actually can... a Stinger in the backside of Foxtrot there. It does oh. get a shot in, but he lost visual right there. Oh, and the smoking drop of the command Abrams to keep the KT from getting shots into it. KT does oh, go down. Su <clears throat> Super Puma. Oh, but Super Puma's gonna spot the the um the Jeep CV in hotel. Oh, oh that's so it. Actually... Does get shot down. Roll the Humvee move. I don't it know. Should. A... Yeah, it probably should. I mean, with the Jurgen on the field here, that's a really low. <laughs> There's no protection on that uh, on that Humvee. I don't know no. if I want to risk it. We're seeing a big infantry play in the Alpha Forest. Both sides really fully committing a lot of infantry, but Bullinger, especially if the Oregon, is going to come out on top. And that, was, that rocket artillery, when it has been operational for Bullinger, has definitely paid itself off. Yeah, I really like the Jurgen play in this game. I've been really critical, I think, of players before that have used them, and I just like I love the way Bullinger's using it because I think that's the way it should be used. It's got a ton of value, even if it won't reflect itself on the um, kill screen. Yeah. No, just the just the ability to change the momentum of a firefight so you can counterattack is like un not to be underestimated, even though it doesn't kill that much. <clears throat> Right, no, it's absolutely tipped the scales a couple times um, originally, and then now the second one. Oh, and actually, oh. see the Apila shots coming out there, but they hit the um, the Abrams. Oh, it kills the first Abrams, but the second squad getting decimated from the uh, bush from the twenty five mils in the back. Along the A two needs to back that squad out of there, yeah. and he's going to. The A two Abrams runs again is almost out of fuel. Yeah, it's yeah. the big downside that you know we don't necessarily see it all the time, Rang, but it burns through that fuel real fast right there. And he needs to be careful, you know, playing the you know the micro game with it back and forth, back and forth through the smoke, because yep. I think he really could use it in some of these engagements here as the Wolks now push up there and decimate the pioneers. And now he has to really stop any major uh, movements of Abrams because if he pushes up too hard, he's not going to be able to come back, and this is going to get dangerous. The Wolks <clears> are getting in close. The uh, Appealer infantry are also close as well, and he's going to decide The that. Mexes are getting oh. caught on the road there, so... Oh, but they do get the better engagement targeting and getting the Wilkes down to 1 HP. The, the Mexes are actually going to back up, though, as well. And there is more armor. There's a mother Wilk you can bring up. Oh, there's and there's two more Wilkes in the reinforcement line coming up as well. He's getting really Wilksy here. And it's working, because he has that very important position on Alpha in the forest, which allows him to... You know, get a shot or two and then pull back. While well, Greyhound right. is having a very hard time in this open ground to actually commit his armor. Yeah, because Greyhound's having to really... He has to use smoke to create the artificial cover constantly. Whereas, <clears throat> Bullinger really only has to smoke the unit when it's truly in danger. Because it does have the forest kind of protecting him. Though the Highlander move here by Greyhound, really smart to get them in there. The Eryxes could be critical in changing the course of this engagement in that town as the spike was... For Bullinger earlier. I'd look to see if the Jurgen targets that. And if Bullinger, I think it's a high priority to get back in that town there. Yeah. That range of Highlanders will just absolutely destroy these Wilks. Yeah, he needs to be careful because these Wilks are backing up. So the CC's been brought up there. It's kind of keeping eyes on it. Yeah, I think Bullinger either needs to just commit to a defense at this point, or if he wants to stay on the offensive, I think he needs to reclaim that. Yeah. 
I mean, he can afford to sit in his laurels and just leave it to be a 50-50, as he does have a pretty decent point advantage for this late into the match. I think his best bet is maybe just try to hold Bravo and then just clear up Foxtrot if possible, because Foxtrot can still be 50 50 I saw Mandra actually called out here by Bullinger. There goes the um, sh one share that goes down. The, now it's going to go ahead and target these me the Mexes here. Greyhound trying to back them up. Oh, look at the smoke, how fast that was. Quick reaction oh. time by Greyhound. Yep, the Salmanja not able to get the kills on the Mexes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the smoke dropping down that fast, you think the tanks should have him. Yeah, you thought it was a smoke. Yeah. Like, is this war now? I only took him eight years. <laughs> Yeah, it took a little bit, but really quick deployment there <laughs> from the uh, from Greyhound as he continues his push. But his infantry does get cleaned up there in the forest, connecting Alpha to Bravo, and now he kind of just has the armor with no infantry inside that forest line. Yeah, this is really the perfect time for Greyhound to try and push heavy into Bravo and neutralize that, make it a 50-50. Yo, Boulanger is relocating the tanks into Gulf. He's going to get caught out in the open a little bit by the C2 Mexuses. This could get dicey. Yeah, both of them trading shot here, but the Salamandra oh. actually going to get a shot in here, which could be decisive. Yeah, big hit. Hulk. There goes the Hawk. Um, optical failure on one of the Mexuses. This is going to get really dicey here. So there go they trade. So now it's down to, oh, I think the Wilk should win this. Though he is, oh, what just, oh, pl planes going down for both players, same side. It's a mess here, but the Wilk does get the kill there on the Mexus, and so the Wilks will end up winning the day there. Yeah, very good trade, yeah, from Boulanger. Yo, he still needs to get quite a bit into Foxtrot. That M1 Abrams command tank is trying to find somewhere cozy to hide. And we're seeing a CV be brought out from Greyhound. I think that's a preemptive CV to sneak into Bravo. But he still has a little bit of raid to go. Bulinger is going to be holding on to that strip of forest. And really make Greyhound pay for every last tree. Yeah, it's definitely, um, he's trying to bleed him out there. And the uh, push oh. from Bravo is going back into Alpha right now. They're a little too aggressive there, Bullinger. The Eryx is slamming into the Wilkes. I think it actually can still see it. It can. He's yeah. past the smoke line. There goes one. Oh, he's going to, he needs to back it up or he's going to lose a multiple of them. Yeah, so he's in the smoke now. So I think the Eryx just, should, yep, and they'll miss there. Yeah. Yeah, very good pick off. I mean, those Highlanders are just in such a perfect position. Like, those rogues are just ineffective now unless those Highlanders go kaboom. The, the command Abrams getting evicted from golf there, restarting the tick there from Bullinger with only seven minutes, you know, and some change left in this game here. That's a massive move there. Yeah. He doesn't even need to push any more into golf. Just keeping that CV out is more yep. than enough. And you see the M1 Rook is starting to chase him down. Oh, the Bradley... Yeah, the yeah, the Brad's going to come in here and try and see if he can clean up there. You, know, you get the frontal hit there from the Bradley onto the Wilk. The Wilk shooting on the move is not going to be very effective, and it goes down. Big pick there from Greyhound. Mm -hmm. yeah, I wonder if he realized that he does have the opportunity to sneak back into Gulf, because I think he's definitely scared a little bit. Oh, he's bringing the longbow. He is. That's some American yeah. superpower, right? Yeah. It definitely is. It's uh, some alien technology right there. But there's actually not too much in golf for him to really kill. There is a Wilk kind of chilling in Foxtrot. But other than that, there's not a ton. He needs to be careful because the Finnish Terminators are chilling in the forest line in golf with their Iglas. And a Sokol actually called out by Bullinger. Yeah. Yeah, at this point, <clears throat> it's just going to be very hard for Greyhound to try and tip the scales. Like, Bullinger yeah, getting a, a very good lead. Yeah, he needs to commit to golf. And he needs to somehow, I think, find a way to either cap Foxtrot... Or, honestly, he needs to kill a CV, I think, maybe, from Bullinger. Are oh, seeing F-18 the... go for Longbow? Yeah, normally I wouldn't be really pro that move. f is really valuable. Just so, you know, f is a high-priority ASF to go straight, try and strafe a, you know, get a hit into a Longbow. But he's playing for time right now, Bullinger is. He feels like if he can just delay some of this stuff, he'll, he can secure the win. Yeah, and the Longbow is going to come <laughs> in very useful here, trying to snipe at M1 Rilk and the T-55. Backing off a little bit to give himself a little bit of distance. Yeah, it is shaking though, so it is having to uh, it is having to back up. Can't hit. He's not anything. getting a lot of hits. No. Yeah, it's shaking from the uh, Indian game there, and the Sokol actually is pressing forward here. Oh, because the Stingers only have one a um, one missile left, and they weren't able to view the Sokol. So a shot's gonna come out here. Oh, and it actually gets the kill there, saving the long. Oh, the Dap was coming though, anyways. Yeah. Well, crazy engagements. Yeah, some real just 
effective trade here for Boulanger. Because he's going to be able to clear out Foxtrot now. Yeah, that's exactly what he's going to do. And that's, that pretty much seals him the deal. Yeah, I think Bullinger's going to um, go ahead and probably um, secure the bag here. I mean, what's your shot? The dab actually shooting at the uh, <laughs> at the MiG-29. And the Wilt's going down there, I think. Something trading right Trade there. Of course, the Abrams. Like Abrams. Yeah, but the T-55 yeah. recon's up. Oh, but the Longbow going to go ahead and try and avenge. Get a kill on this M2. Oh, this is the first M2 Wilt I think we've seen. Yeah, it's open M1. And it's going to immediately get ki killed by Where's the Longbow. Where's the M2 Rook? Yeah, it's it's yeah. dead. <laughs> oh, a shame. Yeah, Bulls are actually taking a risk there, or an attempt rang trying to hit um, in Hotel. He's <laughs> trying to get a sneaky man. CV snipe. It's not a Nighthawk. No, and I also, he hit the wrong spot. Oh. He knew where it was. Yeah, I don't know why he hit that patch of dirt. <laughs> Well, it's pretty funny. I mean, it doesn't matter. It's but it yeah. is pretty funny. Yeah, the longbow gun opening back up again. Yeah, for this match, it's really hard, Greyhound. I think yeah, really focusing on that one eighty two Abrams. He's been having to deal with all these, like, he's, he's been like a quick response force, having to move all over the map, and yeah. he's been useful in Alpha when he's yeah, in regards to like keeping the rooks back. But he hasn't been able to use his armor effectively. Igla out anything. from the oh. Finnish Terminators. Ryze Ring was kill. making his point. I know. And there, How rude. there it goes. But yeah, it's like the ability to use the Abrams has right, especially after he lost his air power of the A10 and Nighthawk, because that was really allowing Greyhound to get those effective kills and then move up. But right. with just at 182 Abrams, he couldn't really commit to it anyway. Because yes, it's a super heavy, but the CQC, those M1 rooks are quite deadly. No, absolutely. It's uh the natu the will the Wilk versus Abrams battle is really curious to watch the whole game because neither player was fully willing to commit to the armor battle between I mean really at all until maybe the very end you saw a little bit of it. And that A two is a you know it's 185 points I believe, and it just never felt like it really got its value out of um, for Greyhound throughout the course of the game, even though it survived the entirety of it. Yeah, yeah, peas and these used up a lot of fuel. Yeah, he burned through some fuel. Um, it took a lot of support around it. And there was a couple of engagements there in that Bravo Alpha sector where it felt like both players had a chance to win the game decisively. And there was just nonstop fighting pretty much for both of them. And it was just awesome to watch the two go at it. Yeah, some real high-level play. And also very mobile play for Paddy Field. This is usually a pretty static map. But it's great fun seeing that yeah, contest contestant contesting over right. alpha point because it's usually just you both just meet grinder into bravo which gets a bit boring yeah and both players pushing the flanks at different times to try and subtly apply pressure while they were making their main push and then you could tell that they were microing across the entire length of the field um so and so it was just interesting to watch that and then you know, even for the swings, like the Jurgen getting sniped by an F-117, <laughs> which is just, like, absolutely <laughs> That's some Yugoslavia shit. And then at the same time, he adds another... He calls out the other one, and it still gets massive value from his rocket artillery. And it's just a absolute um, blast to watch and cast a match between yeah, two what, great players. What a good match. I, I think that's all it needs to be said. Yeah, excellent yeah. match, for sure. GG's to both players. GG's indeed, and that's pretty much all we have time for. So once again, Graham, thank you very much for joining. Very welcome. And as usual, guys, please just take it easy.